What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's world, crypto mining is booming, but making money doesn't always require a GPU or ASIC. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to build a CPU mining rig that's not just powerful, but profitable. We'll go over the hardware, the cost, we'll build the rig and discuss the profits and payback period. So first up, let's dive into the hardware that will transform your crypto game. Okay, so our parts, let's go through them quickly. We'll start off with this motherboard. This is an MSI B450A Pro Max, uh, which is a secondhand motherboard I got off eBay, all refurbished from a good seller. Um, so no need to spend a large amount of money on motherboards. Um, they're not gonna affect your overall performance, but buying something secondhand is risky. So always make sure you get it from a reputable seller moving on we've got this beast of a cooler the assassin spirit v2 uh, 120 plus i said that in the wrong order whatever doesn't matter this thing's an absolute beefcake so it came pretty highly recommended pretty cheap too on amazon that was brand new our ram we've got some cl16 3200 megahertz uh vengeance lpx ram can you see it in here no, nah, but RAM sticks, you know what those guys are. DDA4 as well, 16 gigabytes. Now, 16 gigabytes should be enough um, to not bottleneck my CPU, but we'll find out uh, this NVMe, NVMe um, M.2 drive, 256 gigabytes. Now this, again, you wanna go pretty cheap, isn't gonna affect your overall performance, but it will make it nice using an NVMe over a flash drive when it comes to updating things like that and that. And we've got this little uh, flasher. So this is pretty easy. Got it off Amazon as well. I think it was about 20 bucks. This is just uh, a USB connection to flash uh, your M.2. So you don't have to go ripping your PC apart, putting it in, messing around with all that. Um, yeah, so brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new. Power supply, I went brand new as well. Just a 500 watt thermal take. Um, would have been nice to go modular, but I'm trying to keep costs down low. So there's no real point on splashing out for it. Now I did go 500 watt. Um, you wanna try and stay around 50% with these for the maximum efficiency. So I'm assuming I'll be somewhere around the 200-ish watt mark. So maybe slightly under, maybe over. We'll, uh, we'll put it on the power meter and see what that comes out to. And of course, the money maker. The Ryzen 9 5900X. Can you see that? Will that focus? You know what a CPU looks like. Got that secondhand seller refurbished as well. So it comes with an eBay warranty. Um, you can't get warranties on Ryzen parts that aren't bought brand new, but hopefully it works. We got that for a pretty good rate as well. Pretty cheap. So happy with that. So that is the sum of parts. We'll go through exact costs at the very end. So you can see what it sort of costs to make one of these rigs. But for now, let's, uh, let's build this thing. I'll take you guys with me and uh, I'll give you a few pointers along the way. All right, let's do it. All right, so first up, let's get this um, CPU installed, the little Ryzen 9. Now you'll notice on the back, they've got these little arrows right here. So that arrow matches up with this little dot in the corner there. So let's sit that in there, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's nice, and then let's put this clamping bracket down. Beautiful. Next goes the uh, CPU paste. This came with the cooler, so we'll get that on there. Get plenty of it on there. I'd rather wipe the excess off. Bang, bang, let's spread that around, see what happens. All right, that's a pretty even spread. Let's, uh, let's get this cooler on. Look at the size of this thing, can barely fit it in the camera now. This came with AM4 mounting brackets, so you'll need to uh, do your research and find out which brackets you need. So, this just sits on like so. Let's get these fans on. 
All right, fan is on. Jeez, you can really get a scale of that. I mean, it is a lot closer to the camera, so it's making it look a lot bigger than it is. Well, in fact, no, it is pretty, you know, it's, it's pretty sturdy, which is what we want. We want plenty of cooling. Let's plug this CPU fan in. So check your motherboard um, for specifications for your RAM. This motherboard, the MSI B450A Pro Max, recommends slot two and four for two sticks. Make sure you hear that nice little click like so. That one is in. One, two, click. All right, so there we have it. M.2 is in, RAM is in, CPU and cooler is in. Check the size of this cooler. All we have left to do now, oh and I should mention I've pre-flashed uh, Hive OS on this M.2 so I won't go through how to do that. There's a million videos on it out there. I think I've even got a couple in uh, on my channel so go have a look. Search in the search bar there, I'm sure it will come up. So let's take this over, get a monitor in. We're also going to need a graphics card installed um, because this series of uh, AMD doesn't come with integrated graphics. So let's get that plugged in. We'll go into the room. In fact, we might just do it out here. Hello, my loves. Here we are, the very first little number on my newly installed three shelves for the three rigs I've got coming. So I wonder if you can pick up the air coming out of this cooler. You probably can, it's probably muffled, I'll move. Um, but all went pretty smooth. Now there are a few different little BIOS settings, things like that, controlling fan speeds, dropping voltages, um, you know. XMP on your RAM if you want to overclock it to get a little bit more hash rate but I won't give you too many details on that I will refer you to the expert Mr. Rabid Mining we'll leave a link for his channel here he's the uh, go-to guy in the space when it comes to overclocking and pretty much everything uh, CPU mining so it's been on now for a couple of hours I think um, I wasn't able to go straight from the build straight to setting it up. Uh, newborn babies take up a lot of time. I'm sure some of you guys and girls out there know that. So let's uh, jump over to the computer. We'll jump in Hive OS and have a little bit of a look at hash rates, a um, little bit of profitability and what it costs um, so you guys can get yourself set up too. So we're in Hive OS now and we can see right down the bottom here our 5900X up and running. So it's been up for a little bit longer than that, probably about four hours, but I did restart everything just recently in that room. Uh, the light bulb blew, so I had to replace that. I decided I'd turn everything off just for safety precautions, but you don't care about that. So before we have a look at the hash rate and things like that we'll quickly go through how to set up a wallet and flight sheet so very simply up here you'll see wallets you click add wallet over to the right now the coin i'm mining is zephyr so you would click that or if you wanted to mine zephyr and get paid in bitcoin you would go nice hash dash random x monero oh where did that go sorry nice hash dash random x monero you could put that in but for the sake of this we're going to use zephyr you would enter your wallet address in blah 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 your wallet name and click create once you've done that you'll move over to the next tab across which is flight sheets your coin once again is zeph your wallet the wallet address that you just put in You'll select your pool. Let's just for the sake of it use Hero Miners because I'm actually using Hero Miners. Click apply and then for your miner you want to use XM Rig New. Once that's done, you'll go into your miner config. You want to make sure that your hash algorithm is XMR. 
you can click these little i buttons at the top and they'll auto enter these things in for you your wallet and worker name your url address will be automatically generated from the pool in the previous window now cpu huge pages this is what you want to click on so you can just click this 248 down here and the cpu configuration and it automatically fills it out for you you want to click your cpu make sure that's on otherwise it won't start mining latest version xm rig and nothing else needs to be done unless you want to get very technical and start tweaking with uh, the opencl config and CUDA configurations but for the time being we'll leave that and then you click apply so back on the main page we can see that the 5900x is pulling about 12.25 which is about standard um, for the minimal level of tweaking that i did and the wattage over here, you can't see that. It says 75 watts. That's just uh, what I've entered in for the rest of my motherboards as the supply. And we can go in here and see it mining away nicely. So 12,237.8 hashes or 12.23 kilohash. Look, we just found another job. Now, if you go to hash rate delta no, that will say that the 5900X should be getting uh, 16,000 hashes or 16 kilohash, but I'm assuming that that's wrong. No one that I've seen has been able to get it uh, even close to that. It's generally around the sort of 12 to 13,000 um, hashes or 12 to 13 kilohash. So I'm pretty happy with where that is. And I would rather leave it, um, not overclock the absolute life out of it and, and just keep it mining away at a reasonably efficient sort of rate now. Not sure if I mentioned, but at the wall, it was pulling about 110 or so watts um, last time I checked, something around that. So on par with everything that I've seen out there, which is pretty nice. That cooler is working nicely as well. We can see here uh, 57 degrees max, and it's sitting in a room with, you know, 51 other graphics cards. So that, that cooler is working nicely. I did set that in the config not in the config, in the BIOS, sorry. Um, just to run at, at an aggressive fan curve at 100% pretty much, just to make sure that we can get, you know, keep it as cool as possible. Fans are a lot cheaper, guys, than uh, than CPUs to replace. Remember that, so don't be afraid to, to run your fans at 100% in GPUs or CPUs. These have been running mostly at 100% now for the last two or three years. And, I, and honestly, I, I think I've, the only fans I've broken are ones that I've stuck my finger in while they were moving. Don't ask me why. Just messing around. Let's jump on over here to hashrate.no and look at the numbers, the profits. So here we have the 5900X and up the top we've got Zephyr, the current most profitable coin. Now it says there's a profit of 1.34 uh, USD, but that's for a hash rate of uh, 16 kilohash or 16,000 hashes. Now I have solar, so my rate's a little bit better than this. So I do make a bit more profit, but just for argument's sake, we'll stick with these numbers. So what I've done is we've taken that number, we've divided it by 16, and then we've times it by 12.25, which is our actual hash rate. And that will give us a more accurate profitability uh, and a number that you guys can go off as well, because 12-ish is about what everyone's gonna get. So we'll jump on over to a spreadsheet. I've broken down some of the costs here. So I have bought three uh, CPU rigs in total. Um, but the first one we're looking at is right here. So there's a list of all the parts where we bought them from, the CPU, as I said, from eBay, um, the RAM, UMart, that's a local store here in Australia. So we've got the RAM, the PSU, and the M.2, all from UMart. Motherboard from eBay, as we said, and the CPU fan or cooler was from Amazon. Now we do have another style that we want to test at some stage, but that's uh, for a later date. So the total cost um, was 599.9 Australian dollars, and I've broken that down here into uh, USD as well, um, just to make it a little more universal for everyone. So we can see our current profit <clears throat> excuse me, after we've taken out um, that sort of 30% less hash rate based off the numbers on hash rate, I don't know, brings us out to $1.56 per day Aussie or $1.02 per day USD, which gives us a yearly profit of 569 Australian and 372 
per year um, USD which brings the payback period to just over one year for this rig in particular um, and look the numbers are pretty close I guess um, there's a slight conversion uh, difference in conversion when I was converting USD to AUD I missed a couple of numbers got a bit lazy there but you get the gist so just over a year to pay them back now we do have the two others here um, but I've broken down some other costs as well so the benefits of sort of increasing your farm size as opposed to just buying a one-off rig so we've got the total cost for all rigs here was 1666 Aussie dollars or just under 1100 USD with a total profit of uh, $4.68 Aussie and just over $3 USD so you can see the profits down there as well uh, $1,708 Australian uh, $1,121 USD which brings the payback period for all rigs very similar some of these prices very little bit but 365 days to pay back all of these rigs at current prices if we were to sell all of our profits um, but the cool thing about buying in bulk and the way I like to do these things sometimes is the payback period per rig um, is 121 days so what's that four months right on four months and I've got one of these um, paid back so often I like to just pay one off or half of the rig off and then keep the total profits or occasionally I'll just sell half of the profits monthly just to sort of recoup a little bit of it because look I don't know a ton about Zephyr this is more of a money grab for me than a, than a long game um, but I could be wrong. I'm sure if I start selling my Zephyr in a year's time, I'll regret it because it'll probably 5x or 10x or something. But really interesting when you break down the numbers um, down here. I like like doing spreadsheets. You might have seen on a couple of my other videos, I'm, I'm into the spreadsheets these days. Oh, we missed an L there. Dodgy. Really dodgy. Oh, and we missed some formatting here too. You guys don't need to see this, but I'm OCD, so I'm doing it anyway. So yeah, there we have it. Um, this rig itself, yearly profit. Uh, once again, Aussie $569.40 and $372 per year USD. So it's paying itself, paying itself off in just over a year. Not to mention the fact that yes, you're mining the coin and if you're selling, you're making fiat or dollars. But once you've sold that rig, um, paid it back, sorry, you also have the part. So that's what I love about crypto mining, GPU mining and CPU mining in general, you know, you're buying secondhand parts at a great rate right now because it's a bear market. Those rates are getting more and more expensive, but you're also you're also holding on to what I would call an asset. Like gamers are always going to want cards. Technology is not going anywhere. People are always going to need um, computer parts, CPUs, the 5900X and the 3900X down here are, are solid parts. Not everyone's going to be able to buy the top notch stuff. So really good mid range cards. Um, so they hold a lot of value. So I'm, I'm not selling anything. I'm going to keep this, going to mine it into the ground or until I really need to sell it, which look, that's not going to happen. But, but yeah, pretty cool. When you look at the numbers, I wish I got into this sooner. I would have made a lot more money, but you know, new things are scary sometimes. So better late than never. Hey? And there you have it, a sleek, efficient CPU mining rig that's ready to churn out crypto and make you profits for years on end. But remember, the world of crypto waits for no one and there's still time to get involved. So start building today, start mining and let's stack that digital bread. So if you want to keep up with the world of CPU and GPU mining, do your boy a solid and smash that like button and consider subscribing so I can keep cranking out the content for you guys. So that is a wrap, guys. Stay safe, call a friend, tell them you love them, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.